As the old saying goes, you can't judge a book by its cover. It turns out you also shouldn't judge a musical by its title, especially a title as quirky as Urinetown, the show set to open over at Milford High School later this month. Urinetown is a place, a mythical place, and it is sort of a mystery what Urinetown actually is, but this is set in a sort of post apocalyptic not post-apocalyptic, but it's uh, after a 20-year drought where basically this one big corporation has taken over this town and controls all the water. And so people have to pay to use public amenities. And this is actually based on um, a real situation that one of the writers found himself in in Europe, actually, where they do have you know, like toilets that you have to pay for. And so it just got him thinking like what it would be like if that happened and corporations had this complete control. Um, so... You know, the title itself, which is very quirky, you know, is itself is a pun on, you know, you're in town, because that's the idea that everyone is kind of stuck in this um, blighted society. Um, but the show itself is also um, self-aware, like characters break the fourth wall and talk to the audience and even comment on the fact that it's a weird title and it's a weird premise for a show. So it's a lot of very like nudge, nudge, wink, wink, we're all in on the joke here. Um, and at the same time, the music is also like parodying lots of different famous musical theater styles and even other shows. Like you got your little Les Mis moment, your West Side Story moment, even Fiddler on the Roof, like the music really reflects all that. So it's really all meant to be very tongue in cheek and funny and self-aware that it's it is a bizarre title and a weird premise. I had no idea what the show was about. I had heard the title multiple times, but I didn't really get the premise of it. But um, now I know what it's about, and I <laughs> think it's really funny. All the poor people are suffering and not having the money to, to pee, and the, the, poor, the rich people um, really have those resources, and so you see that divide, and it's sort of a, a satire on society and how... Um, that financial difference affects society. After featuring a pair of iconic and lighthearted shows last year, the MHS Theater Workshop has taken a completely different tone throughout this school year as they've tackled serious societal issues. It is kind of funny that last, you know, last year we did Alice in Wonderland for the fall play and Cinderella, so these very bright, shiny, Disney fun shows. So I guess we somehow took a turn for the darkness this year. Not necessarily intentionally, but, you know, the kids do vote on the shows, and so this just seemed to be the direction we were leaning in. And I think it's kind of cool to go from doing something, like, as well-known and as... Um, family friendly and kind of bright and shiny as Cinderella to doing something uh, that's less well known and quirkier, not produced as often. Although you're in town, um, has developed like its own sort of cult following and it was highly critically acclaimed when it came out in 2001. It won several Tonys, including for best script and best score. Um, so it's known for musical theater fans, but for the general public, maybe not as much as something like Cinderella or Guys and Dolls. So it's cool to embrace like a, a less known um, show and, and a black comedy is, is a fun thing to attempt with musical theater since it's not as common. The cast for You're in Town is anchored by a trio of actors that have been heavily involved with the theater workshop throughout their high school careers. One of the main characters who also basically functions as the narrator is Officer Lockstock, um, and he's played by senior Maddie Miares, uh, who also directed our fall production uh, in November. And so he's the one who's primarily talking to the audience and commenting on the action. So my character is a little bit different. He's the narrator, but he's also one of the cops. So so he's working for the rich people, uh, but it's kind of indeterminate where he came from. In my interpretation of it, he came from a poor family, and so he's experienced both sides of it. And since he's the narrator, he's also kind of on the outside, so he's commenting on that satire and how the poor people are really poor and how the rich people are really rich and how there's that divide in between them. It's definitely difficult because sometimes I feel like I have to interpret it as almost two separate characters, but they're also connected because there's times when I'm really engaged with the audience, but then there's times when I'm only engaged with other characters, and so I have to think about how my character would engage with the audience versus how they would engage with other characters. Senior Jacob Dias' strong acting chops are on full display as he portrays Town's leading man, Bobby Strong. I just like that he's a little bit cocky, but not too much that like it ruins his personality. Like he knows, that he fights for what he believes in and I admire that about him. Emily Fry appears opposite Dias as Hope Cladwell, the charming female lead and daughter of the show's main antagonist. 
It's very interesting because I've never gotten to play the love dynamic role before. I've either been in ensemble or I've been the comedic relief. So it's very, it's like a completely different world to me. Like, it's, it's just been so weird. But like, I'm really glad that if it was gonna be anybody I was gonna do this with, it's gonna be Jacob because he's made it pretty comfortable, actually. I mean, it was kind of weird at first because, you know, we've been friends for so long, but we've, been, we've eventually um, gotten a lot more comfortable working together, and it's a lot of fun working with Emily. You got a little Romeo and Juliet issue going on. Again, this idea of can, can love survive in this, um, you know, really difficult situation where again, like a, most of hope, the hope has been lost in this town for years and years. Most people are suffering. And again, the character Hope brings a ray of hope to the town. Again, very self-aware show. With final rehearsals underway and the show quickly starting to take shape, I asked the cast and crew what moments they think will resonate most with the audience. I think it'll either be a toss up between the act one finale which is like the big scene where everyone's in, everyone has a part, it's a big dance number. And maybe Run Freedom Run, because it's just a, it's just a soulful gospel song and I, I love it so much. There's some beautiful romantic songs, um, some, again, very like clever sort of nods to more classic things like Guys and Dolls. Again, there's a, a moment you would swear it was like straight out of Les Mis, like waving the flag for the masses. I mean, there's a lot of things that I think that appeal to people for, for different reasons. And speaking of the audience, what can they expect to take away from their time in Urinetown? I think at first it seems really silly, and I think the way the writers of it have set it up is so that at the very beginning you think it's silly and doesn't really have a point, and by the end of it, it they really hit you in the face with this is what we're talking about. And so I think that's the experience the audience is going to have, where at first they're like, this is this whole silly thing, and then by the end of it they're like, oh, that was, this, that was there the whole time. This is Milford TV News and Sports Director Tim Coet. Make sure you check out new editions of the Milford Informer every Friday at 7.30 p.m. or during one of our eight convenient re-air times throughout the weekend. You can also find individual news stories as well as full archived editions on our YouTube page My Milford TV. If you live in the greater Milford area and have an idea for a news story, you can tweet at us using the handle at Milford underscore TV, or you can contact me directly by sending an email to news at milfordtv.net.